Welcome to Outdoor Nonsense. Today, we're going cat. Excuse me, how did you catch those? Welcome to Outdoor Nonsense. Today, Whoa! <laughs> Welcome to Outdoor Nonsense. Today, <laughs> what kind of bait are you Whoa! using today? So you want to learn how to catfish. Then you come to the right place. Catfishing, to me the fun of catfishing is not knowing what you're going to catch. I remember being five years old with my dad, going down to the lake and throwing out thinking I could possibly catch a fish the size of me. And that is kind of true. You don't know what you're going to catch with catfish. You could catch a small channel catfish, which we'll be targeting today, or you could catch a giant flathead or blue cat. That's the fun of catfishing, not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing what you're going to catch. And that's how I grew up. So today, I'm going to show you guys what you guys need to do to get started. So I went down to Walmart and got us a few basic rod and reel combos on a budget. All these are under $15, and they're more than capable of doing the job and catching catfish. Starting from the closest to me, we have the Zepco Slingshot. This rod and reel combo comes with a rod, the reel, and it's pre-spool with 10-pound line for $9.88. Uh, the one in the middle is the Zepco 202 combo. Same thing, it comes pre-spooled with 10 pound line and you're getting that rod and reel for $15. And I guess I did lie, the one on the far end is $16. It's the Zepco 404 combo. It comes pre-spooled with 12 pound line. These rod and reels are more than capable of hauling in a uh, channel catfish. All right, now that I told you what we're gonna be using, let me go over how I would go about setting one of these rod and reels up to fish for catfish. I guess I'm gonna be taking you guys to school. Class is in session. And welcome to Catfishing 101. So today I'm gonna show you how to do a Carolina rig. So this right here is a quarter ounce uh, bullet sinker. I got that for a dollar fifty nine for and there's twelve of them in there. Uh, it's a bait holder J hook by Eagle Claw. You get about six of them in there, and this is for a dollar a pack. And then a dollar thirty six, you can get some swivels. This is size seven Eagle Claw swivels. So we're going to start with the basic Carolina rig for catfish. You just take your main line, stick it through that bullet sinker, drop it out of the way, come up to your swivel, run it through the eye, pull you some line, you wrap it around making a new loop above that swivel. You wrap it around about six to seven times. Once you're done, you're gonna run it through that loop, making another loop right here. Grab through, pull that line, cinch it tight. It runs right down. Kind of work it. And take your scissors, cut off that there. Come over here, grab this loop in. Put it right through that eye on the other end of that swivel. Pinch it, run it through, making another loop, just go hook that loop you just made. These hooks come snelled, these eagle claws, and that right there is your basic Carolina rig. Alright, so now we talked about that, let me talk a little bit about the channel catfish and how I set up to catch it. You can find channel catfish in rivers, lakes, ponds, creeks. You can find these things about anywhere. In my opinion, the average size channel catfish in most bodies of water is gonna be typically 12 to 18 inches. You can check and see what's gonna be in that body of water by looking on fish brain. A lot of times they're log catches on fish brain. It's an app you can download. And it's gonna show you what people catch out of that area. I understand if I was fishing for a bigger fish, I would use my 30 pound line on my ugly sticks, my Zepco 888s or something wild, but I'm just showing you guys how I'd set up to catch channel catfish. Majority of the time when I find a new body of water, I look on fish brain and then I try to figure out where I'm gonna fish. And if I'm fishing for just some eating sized channel catfish, I'll look and see where the body of water branches off from the main lake and I'll start fishing on the mouth of that or I'll move inboard from the mouth where I feel like the right depth is, or where I'll see a little bit of structure, maybe some trees or branches in the water. I'm not here to get into all kinds of reading the terrain or talking about topo maps or none of that. We're just here to get you guys out there and catching fish. You can virtually throw off from the dock, which you'll see me do in this video, and catch a catfish right off the front of the lake using a little bit of chicken liver. 
Well, let's go ahead and show you guys how I bait chicken liver. So when you get chicken liver, it comes in these, these, these big chunks. Okay, so that's a lot for that little hook. And I'm fishing for smaller channel cats. So what I'll do is I'll take that bait and I'm trying to get it for like the bite size for the fish. So I'm gonna cut a little chunk off. And what I do with the chunk now is, you see this little webbing on the outside of the chicken liver? I'm gonna hook around that webbing because that's kind of the stronger part. I'm gonna do a basic hook through on that webbing. Come back in. Anyway, I just hook right through, come back in, feed it up the hook, just like so. Rotate it back into the chicken liver and just sit it down the hook one more time. And that right there, once I get the barb through, is tight on the hook. It's not gonna sling off that easy. And that's a bite-sized piece for a channel catfish. Can't tell how big this thing is. These things pull strong. Oh, that's a decent one. Come on. Yeah, no, you don't. Little channel cat. There we go. Jesus Louise. That got on camera, that's kind of cool. Come on back. We're easy now. That's a good one. Come on up here now. Yeah, got you. Chunky thing. All right, now that we got our fish, I'm gonna show you guys how to flay them, clean them, and get them ready to cook. Okay, the first thing I like to do when I go flay my catfish, I like to get a flat surface. The back of my tailgate works pretty good. I'll put a cardboard box down. That way it's not falling in between these little uh, bed liner ridges I have here. The cardboard's also going to stop the fish from sliding around as much as it normally would on a, a countertop or something. Once the fillets come off, I'll be putting them in this water here. Once all the fillets come off, I can rinse the blood off out of them. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to let them sit in salt water overnight after I rinse them off. I'll put the channel catfish, what's left over in there, then I'll take it and I'll dump it somewhere. 
So the first thing I like to do is lay that catfish on its side and get that fin off of the counter, but up in there. I'm gonna feel for the ribs. You can feel the rib bones right through here. Back through here is just all one big filet. I'm gonna take that knife and cut down to the backbone, angle the freaking knife and take it all the way back to here and stop. I'm gonna show you guys that real quick. Behind those, uh, you can feel that rib bone right there and I'm gonna angle that knife just like that. Now I'm on that backbone, run it right down. This knife's cheap, you want a sharp knife. I got this one for like a couple dollars at Walmart. Flip that filet over. You know, see that right there? That's all backbone, it's all the meat off. You're gonna come right here, cut down a little angle. Try to keep it above that skin, keeping that blade pushed flat. One cutting motion, just like so. As a filet, nothing but skin. Now we're gonna continue to do that. It's best not to get in a rush doing this. You don't wanna go too quick and mess up a filet. Right, it's pretty windy out here so i'm gonna show you guys what i got going on i got a pot and i got about two to three inches of vegetable oil in there i like to uh be able to submerge the fish if not because like i said i'm a horrible cook i always burn it it doesn't take long for that fish to get done a lot of people overcook their fish and think it needs to be hard and crispy when it comes out of the grease but it hardens up a little bit and then you have an overcooked fish fillet i'm gonna be making nuggets i'm gonna be making fillets i got the grease going on over here I got some potatoes. I'll make some homemade French potato or French fries. I got some lettuce and tomato and ketchup because that's what I want on mine. And well, let's go ahead and get into it. First, let me get these French fries out of the way. So I pretty much, I pretty much cut off uh, the sides and stuff, and then I just make about quarter, half, quarter to a little bit more than a quarter cuts. I'll slit them up about the same, about quarter by quarter. I just dropped those french fries in there. Don't stir them up, let them set for a minute, let them harden up. If you go ahead and start stirring these around and swishing them, they're gonna break up and then they're just gonna clump up. So just let them sit there in the grease for a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna take my fish, I'm gonna choose which ones I wanna fillet and which ones I wanna turn into nuggets. These bigger fillets right here, I wanna make these for my sandwiches, like this one. And these other ones, I'm just gonna nugget them. So how I like to nugget the fish is, um, you can kind of see uh, the meat layers kind of coming at angles. I want to cut against those angles, so just about inch cubes. Make sure you have a sharp knife. and chop them in the middle. I'm just gonna do that for all the fillets. Okay, so now that my fries are done, I kind of let them get a little too done, but you can see they're brown and floating. I like to lay some paper towel down. Put that paper towel on there to soak up the grease.
All right, so for my fish, I just like to buy this uh, Louisiana Cajun crispy fry. It's uh, seasoned with some spicy stuff. And all we're gonna do is open her up, pour some of it down in a container. And we'll start with the nuggets. Just kind of throw some in there. Make sure they're coated. All of them are coated real evenly. You don't want none missing crispy spots, I guess. I don't freaking know. And you want the, the fish to still be uh, wet when you're doing this, or this ain't gonna stick really well. All right. So you wanna be careful dropping it in here. I'll put it back on the little scooper thing I have. Just kind of drop her in. Same thing as the, uh, so when I'm putting it down there like that, I don't want this grease to rise up real quick and start splashing. So I just kind of sit them in. You don't want to start stirring these things around. You want to make sure they're spread out. You start spreading them around, it's just like the French fries, they're going to break up or knock some of the uh, batter off. I'll check them. Once they start to get kind of firm and floating around, that's when I know they're done. And same thing as the uh, French fries, just put some paper towels down. Shake them off. Try to get that grease off of them. Should get them all out of there. All right, time for the fillets. All right, let me pull them fillets out of there. Put that down right there. Boom. All right, that's how it's done right there. Now, if that was a little rushed or you guys didn't catch much of it, my bad. I work a nine to five just like everyone else and I'm running behind. So there it is, that's how we do it. Welcome to Outdoor Nonsense. That was catfishing. GoPro, stop recording.